Can Olivia eat an entire tub of frosting while we do our introduction video on Revelation? Time will tell. Dear goodness, I hope not, but... Yeah, I don't want diabetes. This is just a small <laughs> snack. That's usually a, a good... No, isn't it called diabetes on the internet? Diabetes. Only if you say it like that. Oh, okay. it's diabetes. Well, welcome to the... To the... <laughs> to the... <laughs> Jackson Cloud. I'm Jamin. I'm Casey. And I'm Olivia. And today we're talking about apparently diabetes. Uh, we're going to hop into a series on Revelation. If you thought our last series was long, who knows what could happen with this one? As Aliens. Casey and I have both already sat through this in Jamin's preaching, Oh, we know that this one's a long one. Well, hang Twice. on. Twice. <laughs> He's been through this a lot. It's good. <laughs> uh, well, here's the thing. There's a lot going on in Revelation. And Genesis, even though it was a really long series we did, like 60-ish episodes... There was enough narration. Sometimes we're like, I don't need to explain it. Just read the Bible. It tells you what's going on. But Revelation, there's always, he's like an, like an onion. A, <laughs> was, it has layers. That was my Shrek impression. You should have said it's like an ogre, <laughs> not like an onion, because that would have made I was it. trying to do a Shrek impression. I know, but you he's, did the actual answer, not the like actual a, reference. He's like an onion. <laughs> no, it so, is the reference. I know, but like... When you're referencing that reference, you're supposed to reference he's like an ogre. Isn't it technically Donkey who says it? No. Donkey says he should have used cake. Oh, right. Why don't you just... Yeah. No, I can't do that impression either. No, that was not even close. Why? Why are, <laughs> why, why are you going... In the morning? I'm making waffles. How's that? Is that, that was better? okay. Was a little I mean, I mean, it wasn't as bad other. as the other one. <laughs> Dishonor. Dishonor on you. Dishonor on your cow. That's my favorite reference from that movie. I want you to know. Yeah, I think it's everybody. Are we still talking about Shrek? You all know no. I moved on to Milan, right? Right. Yes. <laughs> Thank you, Eddie Murphy. Okay, let's go ahead and look at Revelation. What is going on with this book? Because it's crazy and it's it's madness. So let's first off in this introductory video, we got to know what we're reading, right? So, what kind of do we ever genre. actually know what we're reading, though, in Revelation? Which I think you know more than maybe you think you know if you know what you study to know, <laughs> I think. I don't know what Jamin just said, but well, I do know the answer to his question. Okay, so, good. So what there's your question? many different genres of writing, right? Mm -hmm. Think of today, sci-fi, mm -hmm. fantasy. Jamin knows one genre, and it's sci-fi. Romance. <laughs> Romance. Comedy. Comedy. And then you get the hybrids, like that one book I plan on writing someday that's a romance no. sci-fi about no. that Amish guy who has to get a cyborg arm and his girlfriend no longer knows. I didn't think we were playing that game today. Well, so that's like a, that's a clash. I don't that's... even think that was from that game. I think that was just something Jamin came Oh, no, with. yeah. I've, I've had that idea to write a book for a while. But that's like a, that's what we would call a dramedy, right? Like that's right. a... Except it Except wouldn't be funny. A, It'd be almost like a dark... dramedy. It would almost be a dark comedy. Well, uh, originally, comedy, like, as a genre, was not known as funny. It was known as... Um, how to describe it? Uh, well, because you know the divine comedy. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. Strange I always wondered why that was called that divine comedy. For? Right. Normally... There is like a lot of tragedy in comedy as like the classic literature genre, but that's not what we're talking about. So. Well, no, I've always been curious why it's called a divine comedy because I'm like, they just went through hell. None of because this was comedy funny at all. Over the years has like <laughs> changed its definition. Okay. All right. So, well, you get these marriages of different literatures together sometimes to create books that now are blending together. So, like, think of. Um, Pride and Prejudice and Zombies, right? Like, now we've got two different genres we never thought would intersect, intersecting. And if someone 
2,000 years ago would have read Pride and Prejudice and Zombies? Do you think they would have understood it? No. No, because it's almost like a meme, right? Like, it's a meme of our culture. Like, a meme, if I remember right, is actually supposed to... It's a play on the word gene, because it's like a, a mental gene. Everybody has this... All right, Casey's giving me the eye. Let's just... Let's I had never heard that before. That's why I, I heard just... it said that way by uh, uh, Neil deGrasse Tyson, so... Meme, an element of culture or system of behavior that is considered to be passed on from one individual to another by non-genetic means, especially imitation. So like a meme is like somebody paints something for you mentally, another person instantly kind of like gets it and it's passed on just like, you know, your DNA. So it's a shareable on. parody. Something like that. So like if I was to take the meme of Pride and Prejudice and Zombies, or Dark Vader, Dark Vader, Darth, excuse me, I am a real nerd, I promise. Darth Vader narrated by, uh, 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 what's that famous guy who wrote all those plays? William Shakespeare? Thank you, I was gonna say Sherlock Holmes. So, or Darth Vader narrated by Sherlock Holmes, or Sense and Sensibilities and Sea Monsters, like, these are memes for us. You see it, you Sense laugh, and sensibilities? you say it out loud, I hear it, I laugh, ha <laughs> ha, and we keep passing it on until everybody's aware of that. So, Revelation is a bunch of different things coming together, but I would also propose that it's kind of like a meme of its own generation, where we read it, we're like, well, is this guy high? You know, but like for them, they're like, <laughs> they read it and they're like, oh, I see what you're doing there. Oh, I, I get the genetic DNA in your writing that somehow I just inherited. Uh, so let's talk about the different genres. What's one of them that you see in Revelation? Apocalypse. Apocalypse. What is that? Apocalypse is... Not something that we see in today's literature. World. Which is why it's so hard to define and why it seems so weird. Right? Like, let's, okay. <clears throat> Ow. Uh, let I me hope see. I heard that on the camera. <laughs> <laughs> let me see if I can uh, uh, help us out here. I'm going to look up First Enoch, which is a Jewish book. <laughs> Uh, but First Enoch is also an apocalypse of sorts. So let's just fast forward here. Let me just read something right out of the middle of it. Uh, From there I traveled to another place, and he showed me to another great and high mountain of stiff rock in the west. There were four hollow places in it, having depth and exceeding smoothness, three of them dark and one shining with a spring of water coming from the middle of it. And I said, how smooth are these hollows, great depths and dark places in the vision. Then Raphael, the ninja turtle, who is one of the holy angels who was with me, oh, that ruined it, answered and said to me, these places are hollow in order to gather together the spirits of the dead souls. For this very thing they were judged to gather together here are the souls of men. And these places for their reception were made until the day of their decision, until the division and limitation of time in which the great judgment will be with them. I looked on all the dead men who were petitioning, and their voice went up to heaven, pleading. Then I asked Raphael, the angel who was with me, saying to him, This petitioning spirit, blah, 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 blah. If I did not tell you that I was reading First Enoch, and you were not super familiar with Revelation, but, like, you've heard it read before, you would have just thought I was reading Revelation, right? If I just told you, hey, this is out of Revelation, you ready for this? And then I read that. Surely there's somebody who would be like, that's weird. Revelation's a weird book. And I'd be like, got you! That was First Enoch! But the reason that you would think that it was Revelation is because the genre overlapped. Like, mm -hmm. you had an interpreting angel show up, carry Enoch somewhere. He saw a number of things, and their visionary purpose had meaning, and there was talk of judge, the coming judgment on the day of the Lord, and there was this angel explain Like, these are... I literally just opened Enoch and turned to a random page. And if you didn't feel like that felt similar to Revelation... No, I didn't understand it, so yeah, it felt very similar. <laughs> well, even just looking at some of the themes, it's 
connecting to the same themes that Revelation gets into. It's using the same kind of devices. I don't know. It used a three instead of a seven. It used a four first off. Thank you very much. It was and a three and one. It was a four and one. Three shows up in Revelation. Thank you. Uh, but numbers are important. Symbols are important. Angels are important. Explanations from angels are important. The day of judgment are, are important, is important. And that was all right there in First Enoch. So when people read Revelation... Already knowing this literature existed, like, I'm fairly certain John had read an apocalypse before in order to write an apocalypse. No, those are real easy to write. It's no big problem. I, I think John's riffing off of apocalypses he had already, like, known. Um, what? Tropes are a thing? Meme. Meme. Everybody who read First Enoch would be like, oh, wow, that was deep. I got that. Like, I understand why they use that number. And also, I didn't get it at the same time. But I got some of it. And then when John does it again, it's like the passing on of the meme. It's the passing on of the, the mm, mental gene. The meme. Get it? No. Get it? Okay. I still don't think mental gene's a thing. Okay. Uh, stop using the word meme then. So, as Olivia said, it's an apocalypse. Well, meme is a different definition. It's an apocalypse, and this meme died out a long time ago <laughs> because we read it today, and we just don't, like, new. Yeah, unless you are a Bible scholar who has studied the, like, reasonings behind the meme, for the average Joe, you read it, and it's even worse, for the average Joe, you read it, and you see it in an entirely different light than they meant for it to be in, right? As... We'll see a million times throughout this series when we get into what's the number of the beast? What did it mean? What is this? Like people see everything happening today as something that was going on in this book, whereas that book was writing a lot about what was happening in John's time and people take it out of place because not only is it a apocalyptic meme, it's holy apocalyptic meme. <laughs> and when people read holy inspired writing, and you come across a meme you don't understand, you pull out a lot of weird memeing behind it. <laughs> is there, is there, did you get that? <laughs> <laughs> All right, think of, think of this, think of this. I'm worried that you've said meme so many times it's, that we've, we've it's lost, lost its meaning. of our... <laughs> 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 uh... He just used the same joke twice in a row. Oh, was that the same yes, one from last? Oh, dang it. Okay. All right. Well, think of this. Have you ever read Lit RPG? Uh, no. All right. Lit RPG. You guys have played D&D, &D, though. Yes. Yeah. So you roll the dice. You make a decision. <clears throat> depending on what you rolled, you might get a boost to your stats eventually. Your stats go up and whatnot. Lit RPG is a genre of writing that is becoming unusually popular right now in which people are literally just basically writing their books in D&D &D form. <laughs> so it's like, and then John decided to punch the ogre in the face and he rolled a 20. Yay, critical hit. And he punched the ogre and thus his stats went up blankety blank. And then the whole character sheet just appears in it. This is, you can go buy lit RPG on Amazon. These are actual books now. That actually might get me to actually read the book for a while. <laughs> like that's... Well, okay, but think of this. You would get that. Yes. You would read that. You would understand that. Give that to your mom. No. And she's going to be like, what are, is my child smoking crack? You know, like, what, what I'm glad kind that's of, my mom's voice right there. <laughs> what kind of logic is going on here? Think of Revelation like that. It's lit RPG of the past where they understood it, they saw the meaning, and then 2,000 years later, someone handed us a meme of the past and was like, dude, you got to check this out. We're like, Oh, this is some weird stuff going on here. And let's be honest, it is some weird stuff. And intentionally weird in some places. But we're also missing a whole bunch because we don't understand Apocalypse. See, I feel like that would be the same case as if, like, if the whole world was destroyed, but then somehow, like, yeah. movies from the 80s, Recently like, found somehow one. existed and people could actually 
watch them. Mm. Like, and watching, like, their special effects. In or a watching... thousand years, after the Atomic War, some futuristic person finds Star Wars. You're just reading Adventure Time plot to us now, I think. is. <laughs> go on, go on, go on. And don't know what it is. Mm-hmm. And maybe they write that down as history. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Or think of... Here, let's give a reality to it. I'm not sure if this is in line. We might be way off now. <laughs> reality. Big Bang happens, sends everything flying in different directions. This is where we get the idea that everything is at all times moving away from each other. Because a long time ago, everything exploded. And we're still moving. Everything's still moving outwards. Okay? That's... That's theory of something-tivity. I don't know. Whatever. (laughs) That's not theory of relativity. (laughs) Everything has exploded and everything is still moving, is what scientists say. For that reason, in billions of years, one day our ancestors... Ancestors? Our future ancestors? <laughs> descendants! That's descendants the word. is the word you're looking Our for. Our future descendants in a million years will look up and the stars will be missing because they have moved that far away from it and light is no longer, things are getting off. Or at least dimmer, if you will. I like dimmer better. But multiply dim by a trillion and you'll get non-existent. <laughs> no, because... Other ones that will have passed us will have taken their spot. Sure. But they will look back at us and think, um, look at these idiots. They said there were bright things in the sky, morons. You know, and like we were like, no, but there were. <laughs> like we're not just making up like a, a past reality. This was our, our moment of, of truth. And my application of that is... Crap, yeah, there is no application. <laughs> I use that to talk about other themes. You talked about in a hundred years, in a hundred years we discover something and be like, what is this? So my application is in a million years people will think we're crazy. Think we're crazy for looking at stars, but that doesn't apply to revelation. So that no, was no, no, just no. even better, <laughs> even better. Mm-hmm. In a trillion years, they're gonna find a book on astrology. Mm-hmm. <laughs> well, not understand literally like what even, does it mean that this person the thinks they're a lion <laughs> okay so <laughs> let's try to bring that analogy full circle revelation in that light 2000 years ago their culture their life writing about all these different things that apply to their particular scenarios right and then 2,000 years later, we pull out the book and we're like, oh, man, they were writing about what, like, we're all going to get a vaccine and that's the mark of the devil. You know, like, that's us. T- <laughs> that, what are you laughing? No one would ever say that. So <laughs> that's, that's the... <laughs> Why are you guys laughing? Because people have said Yes, that. I know. And it's not. But that's, that is a great example of what I'm trying to get at, though, is that people look at, at like, our current place in time as though John was writing 2,000 years into the future, and then they're like, this is what John meant to say. Whereas John meant to say other things I don't want to say yet because that's its own mini-sode, and I know how many clicks we're going to get on something that uses the mark of the beast in the title. So I'm not going to say it now. All right. <clears throat> Um, this is what online church is all about, people. Clicks. <laughs> I'm, I'm just kidding. I'm kidding. Click for Jesus. Okay. Oh, no. No. <laughs> it was a joke. Wait, what? That's a it's thing? It's a joke, but it's not. Is that a thing? It hurts. Wait, is that a... Is oh, that... like share this if you... Yes. Yeah, that drives me nuts. Okay. Uh, next thing. Apocalypse. Okay. Um, what else? What other genres are going on? So we have one, this confusing meme of old that we don't understand. What's another one? I mean, foreshadowing and symbolism. Okay, so those, those would are be... Those are literary elements, yep. but they're not genres. But we could push that into a genre. Can we? 
Um, Time travel. <laughs> that's no, what that's I'm under trying sci-fi. to. That's what I'm trying <laughs> to pull people's minds out. That's how people often interpret John as, oh, a swarm of locusts with metal teeth. That must have been helicopters. You know, I was like, no, that's not what John was doing, you guys. Uh, I mean, if you see Dune, that makes sense. That is true. The swarm of locusts. <laughs> yeah, it's there. dragon. <laughs> yeah. Nope. It was a prophecy of Dune. Okay. <laughs> Uh, okay. Well, okay. So there we go. We can put that in the title. You said, you said symbolism and what else? Numbers? Foreshadowing? Foreshadowing. So prophecy is maybe a genre that those kind of things belong in a lot of time, right? So think of the, the prophetic books of old. They use those elements constantly. Foreshadowing that which is to come. Speaking God's word out, saying if you don't turn from this, then this will happen. That's prophetic word. Nineveh is a great example. Nineveh, repent of your sins or God is going to get rid of this place. And they all repent and God's like, okay, I won't do it because they actually repented. So that, that's prophecy, the foreshadowing, but also the willingness on God's end to, to be patient and to work with people if they respond. But then symbolism is all over the place in prophetic books of old, right? Let's think of some symbols. The church as bride, uh, when God has Hosea marry a prostitute for the sake of like saying, this is Israel, this is like your relationship with me, you're always cheating on me, going after all these other things and not being faithful to your marriage, and that's symbolism. And since we just went over Genesis, it seems fitting to throw in Joseph, mm-hmm. whose whole life was basically... Spirit fingers? No, symbolism, <laughs> but oh. uh, interpreting symbolism. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, Joseph, we just finished this that. His whole life, basically. All the dreams and yes. all the symbolism. So, And those were prophetic dreams. They exactly. were foreshadowing, which is to come through symbolism. Jesus uses parables to use symbolism as a prophetic way of speaking to people. So prophecy is, is a big part of this, and that's important. You know, uh, I just joked a lot about how people... Like, look at Revelation. It's like, what was he on? You know, but like, this is more than just an apocalypse. This isn't First Enoch. First Enoch might have been an important book, but it's not scripture. This is a prophetic book written to us about that which is to come. And so, as much as I joke about people reading things into stuff, we also have to be honest that John's apocalypse is literally about the end of this age. The difficulty is most people interpret stuff that was not about the end of this age to be about the end of this age. So like the mark of the beast and Babylon and all these things, like they don't understand Babylon was Rome, mark of the beast was, I can't tell you because that's a different video, Uh, and all these things belonged back then. Now, could they also belong today as themes? Absolutely. Absolutely. If there was something that required you to, like, turn away from God and, like, think of um, um, Daniel, right? No, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Think of those guys, Shadrach and Benny. If you guys don't worship our gods and take up this mark, we will kill you. The that's bunny, the bunny. That's, you know, I was refraining mm, from bunny. singing it. She tried so hard and you did it anyways. <laughs> I didn't eat my salad. Okay, stop me before I do the whole thing because I have it memorized. Um, I also knew that was going to happen. Chad, Rack, and Benny don't take up the mark of the beast and therefore are killed. Like that's the same thing going on in Revelation with the martyrs of old. They don't take up the mark of worshiping all the false gods and they're killed. And that could also be today where it is in plenty of countries around the world. Worship our gods. No, we will not take up that mark. Okay, then you shall be killed. So, is that a future thing? Sure. But is that also a present thing? Yes. Is it also a past thing? Yes. Was it also happening before Revelation was written? Yeah, it was in the Old Testament. So, like, that's an example of, like, these themes are big. They're big brush strokes. And it's not necessarily, like, this exact moment in the future. But it's, like, this kind of thing has always been happening. Okay. So prophecy is going on there. Um, another genre, though, that I think is important to recognize is... you, you have any others in mind? 
without reading my notes. I, I, I'm going to be honest, I only remembered the apocalypse. Apocalypse, prophecy. I don't remember any of this. Who's Off he, the top of my head. Who's he writing this book to? The church? Seven churches for it to be passed around church to church. What do we call a kind of literature that's written to someone? A letter. It's a letter, right? And that's important, and that helps us with the context, because John is literally writing to people he knows. <laughs> right, he's not writing this to us. He's no. writing this to people in his time. The Bible was written for us, but not to us. Scholars like to remind us of that over and over again, because we get these things confused a lot of times, where we read, oh man, I didn't realize America was the church of Laodicea. <laughs> it's like, no, the church of Laodicea was the church of Laodicea, Laodicea. where John knew people <laughs> and was writing. And now, been. could your church be also living the same way as the church of Laodicea? Sure, broad strokes, right? But John wasn't writing to you. He don't know who you are. <laughs> Also, John thought the end was coming probably any day now. And probably wasn't thinking, and in 2,000 years, how would I explain this to people with advanced technology? He doesn't even know what technology is. They created a yoke system recently. Now we can use two oxen to carry us around. You know, it's like <laughs> technology is, is ancient at this point. So not probably in John's time, since Casey's staring at me like I was just making jokes. I mean, I feel like that would have been way before then, but... Yeah, yeah, sure, sure, sure. But my point, my point is, this is a letter written to specific people, specifically, specifically, seven churches, and uh, it's become biblical canon for all churches of all time to read and understand... But you can't throw your brain out the window. You have to understand Revelation in its ancient context if you want to see what he's getting at. But it's more fun to throw your brain out the window. Here's, here's another example. John writes to a woman, Jezebel, that she's misleading the church. Interesting to point out, there's a woman leading the church, and that's not why he's mad. Hmm? Just want to draw attention to that, because women are called to ministry. Okay, so that's one thing. But also, John's problem with him, with her, is that she isn't, uh, she's like leading the church into really bad theology and sin. Okay, And he's calling attention to her. Now, people would look at that and be like, oh, this lady in 2021, she's Jezebel. It's like, no, John was writing to someone in his time who was Jezebel. So this is what I mean is you, you got to learn to understand what is ancient, what is present, what is future, and what is broad brush strokes that just constantly come up over and over again throughout spiritual history. And we'll get more into a lot of those symbols as we go on. But this feels like a boring episode, but it's crucial. Like, you have to understand this if you want to read this book right. And I feel like a lot of revelation, interpretation, memification. No. A lot of revelation interpretation that is faulty is faulty because... People don't know what they're reading. And if we know it's an apocalypse, it's a letter, and it's that other thing I said. Prophecy. Thank you. Then we'll get the rest of it a whole lot more than we would have before. But we will never understand it fully. And that is our next episode. You're welcome. Just want everyone to know we'll never understand this book. Okay. Mm -hmm. Uh, in the meantime, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe down below. And congratulations to someone that finally beat me to the first comment. But see if we you see. can do it too. We see you. I see you. Is that Tarzan? No? Jane? Oh, I see you. <laughs>
not really understand what people were talking about with the whole unyoked relationship thing and get really confused on what eggs had to do with it 